Right, a little while ago I showed how I made this ball turning attachment for the Chinese mini lathe and it's been a very successful tool, I'm really pleased with it. And in that video I showed these mandrels here for holding the um, bar to actually turn the ball. And several people have been asking me where I got these. I did actually make them. But today I'd just like to show you how to make a quick and easy mandrel rather than having to turn down a piece of bar like this and then um, die cut the end here or screw cut the end. I found a much easier method, simple to do and you can make it out of mild steel, aluminium or stainless steel. I'm going to show you how to make it out of stainless steel and it's very quick to do. Um, before I do that I'd just like to show you these new tools here I've got and I'm going to be using these tools to actually make this um, mandrel. So firstly I've got this new set of metric drills in this nice box all numbered up. I used to keep my drills in a box just thrown in a box and they get dirty like that and also um, you're forever looking through the box and if you can't read the size on the side you have to measure them up with a micrometer or whatever. I like having drill sets like this now in compartments where you can just look at the um, size, take it out, use it and then put it back. And these are really nice quality HSS drills. I've used these before and they're um, brilliantly ground and cut perfectly. And I'll be showing those in a minute in the workshop um, making this mandrel. Another thing about this mandrel is that um, the one that I previously made here um, with the die cut thread on the end here Obviously over time the um, thread can wear out or um, you want to um, use it with a longer thread in to make the ball further out from this um, actual component here. Makes it much easier to turn. I've made this one with a um, thread stud in the end so you can actually change the thread. And like I say, it makes it much easier to make than the previous one. And over time I'll make up a set of these. It's worth having one with uh, all the different thread sizes in. And then you can actually use the mandrel for all different jobs apart from the ball turning. I've got the 6mm um, and 8mm at the moment. Well, I've got the 8mm one and in a minute I'm going to show you how I make the 6mm one. 8mm is normally the size for most um, handle balls. Um, I've made this one here, when you, when you saw it last it just had this um, aluminium handle on. I thought it would be nice to put a ball on each end and give it, give it a bit more character. Plus it's also nice to operate now because you can just hold the balls like that and do the turning. So like I say, um, most handles, especially on the um, modern tooling uh, for ball turning attachments or whatever, are 8mm. So they can um, just screw onto this one, obviously in the blank form, and then turn it. Plus, like I say, you can actually use the mandrel for other jobs. And if you're new to engineering, it's great to make up something really simple like this to get a bit of practice in. So make up a set of these, you'll have a great tool and like I say you can get the practice in turning and drilling and threading with a tap. And in mentioning screw taps, I've got a new screw tapping tool. It's this one here and I've never seen these before. It's got a cone cutter end on the end here with a strong spring and these go onto the tap. They just slide onto the tap and then you lock up this end here. And when you're doing screw tapping into work, this actually automatically chamfers the end of the thread here. When you use a normal um, screw tap like this, after drilling and tapping it actually throws up a burr here. And this tool here 
screw taps and removes the burr all in one go. I think it's an excellent idea and like I say it's the first time I've actually seen these um, tools. A very low cost to buy and you buy the set like this without the tap so you can actually put it on any of your taps. I'll just show you, show you how it goes on to the tap. So in the set you get three, four, five, six millimeter and eight millimeter sizes. They're clearly marked on the side here. This is the eight millimeter one, like I said. And you simply put this type of um, screw tap into this one and push it down to whatever depth or the length of tap that you want um, protruding from the end here and then just lock up these two grub screws. So these are the best type of taps to actually buy for this um, set. But if you have um, the other type, like this, where the thread is larger than the shank, you can still use these ones. If you pull off the back end, it's quite tight, I'll just pull that one off. And then you can put the screw tap in like that and then replace the end pushing it down into the spring and then locking up on the shank with the two um, allen bolts so in a moment i'll show you uh, one of these in use on the machine to make this mandrel i've got this piece here and i've already um, screw tapped these holes here and you can see the or i'll show the burr there on the edge there imagine that it wasn't screw tapped put the tap in your wrench there tighten up and then wind the tap into the work and as soon as that cutter gets to the workpiece like that it's under the spring tension and it's taking that burr off as you can see and you can see there the burr is gone now and it's put a nice little chamfer on the end of the thread there and I think they're really excellent tools and if you do use the other taps where you have to put them in like I just showed um, you can't just push that collar into the spring um, as it's quite um, tight all you do is hold the end here and twist it clockwise and it'll slightly open the spring and fall into place then and then you can actually lock these up so now I'll try the 8mm one it's got quite a large burr on the end there screw that one in and imagine you're just doing this all in one go, doing the thread and the chamfer. It just pushes on the end face of that thread there and removes the burr. It's an absolute brilliant idea. And I'll put the link below for both these sets, but now I'm gonna go out to the workshop and try both the drill and this uh, tap and chamfer tool 
on making one of these mandrels. Right, for the 8mm one I used um, a 19mm diameter bar and I make them about 100mm long. And now I'm making the 6mm one, I'm going to make it 100mm long still but I'm using 16mm diameter bar and that's the smallest I'll go uh, for any uh, mandrel of this type um, because you want a nice size diameter to actually hold on and this is 316 stainless steel and I'm using the DCMT 070204 insert tool which I like to use on the Myfin and the um, Chinese Mini Lathe. The actual shank for this one is the SDJCR 1010H07. And I'd just like to mention, you can see here that I'm using ER32 collets with all the um, tools already set up. I leave these set up permanently. So I have the core diameter for the 6mm um, drill or 6mm thread and this is the 5mm drill. So you can see there the drills cut excellently on stainless steel. Um, I will be putting that one back in the box and putting another one in the ER32 um, collet chuck because I like to have a set which I just take out of the box and put it back in the box. Like I said earlier, um, having these ER32 uh, collet chucks set up like this not only makes it much quicker um, when machining but it also has a tighter grip on the drills and taps or whatever and stops them from spinning. And this is an ER20 collet chuck that I've got with the 2MT taper. I'm quite fortunate because the Chinese mini lathe has the 2MT taper on the tailstock and so does the Myford so I can use these tools in both machines. And this is the tap set up, the 6mm tap with the um, chamfer tool on. And I use Trefilex cutting compound on the screw cutting taps. Um, I found a large tin of this down my recycle centre which I bought, but you can actually still buy it on eBay.
and so that I don't break taps whilst using the lathe I don't actually use the motor to do the um, tapping I just pull the pulley wheel here and it has much better feel over the screw tapping and you can stop immediately if it um, jams up a bit you can also use those handles that I've shown how to make in the past to do the screw tapping and that gives a great feel as well but you can also use the chuck if you need to, just turning it by hand like this. So that's the thread cutting done and the burr taken off the end all in one go is an absolute excellent tool even on stainless steel and saves a lot of time. And if you do want a larger chamfer on the um, end there you can actually take it in again. When the cutter touches the front face of the work and pushes the spring back it obviously feels like it's under tension and you have that feel with the um, pulley wheel or the handle if you do it manually. It does feel like the tap has gone tight in there but it's not that, it is just that pushing back on the spring. So then next I finish turn the end. And then I just do three decorative grooves on the end here just so that I know it's a mandrel tool when I'm picking it up and not just a piece of bar and it also makes it look better plus I can use the same tool And then you can carefully deburr with a file. I rest my hand on the back guard and just touch on the corners. Or you can use um, a 45 HSS tool like this one just to put a couple of small chamfers on the corners. And then you can just use a long grub screw or cut off the end of a bolt a certain length of thread and just screw that one in the end. So now I have the 6mm mandrel and the 8mm one and as I need them I shall make the others up until I've got a really nice set. So this is the 8mm mandrel back up and you can see there that I've made a minor alteration. I've turned down the 
shoulder here a little bit more to give more clearance for the uh, ball turning attachment for the insert to come round. Also I found that it's best to have Loctite 638 on the thread that's screwed into the mandrel. What I did was put this ball on the end of the thread first, just tighten that one on um, in a vise. And you can use a piece of bar if you haven't got a ball. Um, screw that on as long as the thread is running true in the bar. Screw that piece of bar onto the thread, like I said there. And then put Loctite 638 on the end of the thread that's going into the mandrel. Screw it home quickly and then you can use a soft mallet whilst turning the chuck to actually give this a tap on the high spot until you get it running dead true. And Loctite 638 does go off very quickly so you have to do that um, quite quickly. Um, if you haven't got a component to screw on the end here you can just eye up the thread to see if it's running true first. When the Loctite 638 has gone off it's absolutely solid and won't move at all. If you want to get the thread out in the future you can actually heat the end up here with a gas torch until you see the vapour coming off of the Loctite 638 and then you can use a pair of pliers while it's hot um, to unscrew that thread and change it for another one. Plus for this thread either use high tensile steel thread or stainless steel. And like I said earlier you can use these mandrels for ball turning or you can use them for second op work on other components. They're one of my most used tools on the lathe.